Then we got a couple of questions here about the NRA and sort of the uncertain future that lies ahead. Uh, got an interesting question from Steve here, uh, who says, he asked basically, what is the current ratio of lifetime members of the NRA compared to total current members? Um, and he, it's an interesting distinction, right? Because lifetime members, they still stay on the membership roles, but they're not necessarily kicking any more money into the organization. They've already paid their money to become lifetime members. And so right. the ratio between actual dues paying members and lifetime members matters for the group's finances. So do we have any insight into where that ratio stands? Yeah, we do have a little bit, uh, and I'll get to that in a moment. But but yeah, this is a very important point, I think, because this is one of the main reasons why you've seen the NRA's revenue shrink so much as their membership has shrunk, right? We, we published, obviously, some internal documents uh, a little while back that showed both of those drops. And um, that's because a lot of, you know, the NRA really does get its revenue from its members. You know, um, it's not funded by... Uh, you know, the gun companies are billionaires, not that, the, you know, the, there's some funding that comes from the industry, um, but the, the bulk of where they get their money is from members. So when they're losing members, they're losing money. And the bulk of that revenue, that membership revenue comes from people who are short term members, who are annual members, three year members, you know, whatever. And um, and you can really see that in there, the, what you described there, the, the fact that a lifetime member is not necessarily a, a source of revenue for the NRA. In fact, it's they're probably a source of uh, cost because they have to service that member forever, you know, with magazines or whatever other perks come along with the NRA membership. And that person doesn't ever have to pay them any money again. So, um, <clears throat> you know, this is sort of one of the dangers that people talked about with aggressive lifetime membership promotions where, you know, they discount the lifetime membership. It'll, it'll lock in a lot of people. It'll make your baseline membership higher, but it also is sort of eating future revenue by doing that. Um, anyway, uh, we do have some insight. Now the NRA membership is kind of like, it's kind of like uh, modern media where it's like video games or streaming shows where you don't really have great insight into how many people actually watch something or actually played a video game these days because you don't have the old school physical media sales numbers that we used to have, right? And so you kind of only get information whenever the company wants to give you information about how well a game or movie did, right, on streaming uh, or through through the Steam store or something like that. And, and so NRA membership is kind of like that. There's no legal requirement for them to uh, disclose who their members are. Right. It's a 501c4. So it's it's a nonprofit, but you, they don't have to disclose their donors or, or members in this case. And so they don't even have to tell you how many members they have. If they don't want to. And we've seen, you know, some questionable claims about how many members they've had in the past that don't line up with what their internal documents are saying. But one of the ways you can guess at how many members they really have um, is by looking at the ballots, the number of ballots that have gone out to. Uh, in, in NRA elections. So, uh, you know, here I have, uh, this is the October 2021 uh, meeting of members, the minutes from it. This is the most recent one that has been given out, I believe. Um, and, oh, sorry, here's this, my bad, 2022. I got all of them from going back several years, right? Uh, the, these They give out these documents at the annual meeting, if you go to it, if you go to the, the members meeting, you will, um, you'll be given, you know, the, the, this various information reports on the organization, its financial health, its election, uh, you know, how many people voted for who in, in the election, that sort of thing. Um, and, one thing to know about the ballots in the NRA election is only certain types of NRA members can vote in NRA elections. And this is where we get some of that insight. So lifetime members and members who've been had active membership for five or more years are the people who can actually vote in NRA elections. And they get sent out by via mail a ballot from the NRA <clears throat> every year. You know, So you get some idea of what their lifetime membership is at. Um, and it's a, or I guess the limit of it at the very least. And so in 2022 uh, elections, and we'll get the details on 2023 at the annual meeting this year. Um, they're, you know, a year behind. And 
Anyway, bottom line, they had 2.56 million ballots sent out that year, which means they're somewhere around two and a half million lifetime members. I know mean, obviously there's five year members in there somewhere, and we don't know the breakdown between the two of those, but it's likely, I think, that the people are are buying more lifetime memberships than they are five year memberships. But um that gives you some insight into what the baseline level of support is at where it's lifetime members you can revoke your lifetime membership i guess but there's no real incentive for the nra to remove somebody from their roles uh or put a lot of effort into figuring out whether a lifetime member is still you know active in any way or even honestly still alive you know if you pass away how's the nra going to know that you're not a member anymore uh they're right. not were they going to, you know, unless they go out and survey everybody every year, they're not going to have exact numbers on these things. But that gives you an idea. Um, and and I will say, like, if the lifetime membership is somewhere around two and a half million, some of the numbers that have been thrown around from NRA board members in recent uh, months are pretty dire then. Because, you know, we, we had a piece a little while back where <clears throat> uh, Owen Buzz Mills, who is a longtime board member and critic of the current leadership of the NRA. He said that there's somewhere around 3 million members left. That was his claim, which would put the annual, you know, the anyone under a a five year membership at about half a million, which is, which is a remarkable shift and and an incredible shrinking of the group because they're not going to be able to shrink much below this 2.5 million number uh, in practice. And that's where <clears throat> you really start to be concerned if that's the case. Now, Willis Lee, another board member and also a critic of, of current member uh, leadership, is um, said the number's at 3.8, so that would be a little bit more. And the NRA denied Buzz Mills's number but wouldn't give their own estimation. So we don't, we don't know exactly how many they have, but there, that's, I think, a good breakdown. You can also get an idea of membership from magazine distribution. Uh, like another imperfect number, but most members get the magazine. And so one of the magazines, uh, most will get a couple of the magazines, I think actually, but you know, that <clears throat> the circulation of the magazines is another way to sort of gauge how many members there, there are, uh, around these days. But, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's the best I can do as far as insight into membership. Uh, I know it's a little bit long, but it's, uh, you know, these things are not, it's, it's not an exact science as an outsider uh, trying to figure out how many members are. Apparently it's not an exact science for even board members either because <laughs> you've got competing numbers, but right. uh, hopefully that gives some clarity. Yeah. And, we'll, and sort of along those lines, we have another uh, question about, yeah, you know, maybe the membership's where it is now, uh, but has there been any chatter about outreach to boost those numbers? And this uh, member asks specifically in the context of uh, gun clubs and gun ranges, many of which have traditionally, it's pretty common to hear local gun ranges will require um, NRA membership for you to be able to shoot there. And there's been a, a trend, at least a small trend of some of them uh, getting rid of that uh, as a policy, um, just in light of sort of the scandals surrounding the organization. And that's obviously a, a share of, of new membership for people, people that want to go shoot, they join the NRA, and that's a new source of dues paying members. Um, so has there been any chatter about how to change their outreach strategy or boost those maybe somehow? Yeah, I think that's a really good question, because that is like a underappreciated way that the NRA has built up its membership over the years is by really becoming ingrained with with shooting ranges all over the country and shooting clubs and and incorporating them into their efforts. Uh, so if the, and they have been losing some of those, uh, it's not really clear exactly how many or how widespread right. this is, but I've certainly, certainly heard reports of this across the country. Um, you know, my home state of Pennsylvania, I've heard several people say that their, their local clubs have stopped requiring NRA membership <clears throat> and it's obviously a, a problem for them. But as far as what are they doing to try and recruit new members or try to deal with this the setback, uh, or really the all of these setbacks put together. Honestly, I don't I don't see them doing much of anything in terms of new strategies to bring in members. Um, their entire focus at this point seems to be just trying to survive. Oh, excuse me, 
survive this uh, legal fight. You know, their leadership right now, you know, Wayne LaPierre resigned, as we know. Um, <clears throat> he's also found liable for $5.4 million in, in funds that he took from the NRA uh, by, the, by the Manhattan jury. And so he's unlikely to come back, but the leadership is still mostly the same. Charles Cotton is the president. Um, Andrew Rolandum is executive vice president. These are people who were longtime Wayne LaPierre supporters and allies um, who stood by him through all this stuff. And I don't see much distance between him and them at all. Uh, and I don't, I don't even know if they would want people to see it, any distance distance between uh, him and them. So uh, they're just it sure seems like they're just putting everything they have into trying to get out of this New York court case with current leadership still intact that that really feels like the ultimate goal um and so there isn't much effort being put into anything else as far as i can see no, no certainly nothing new there there's you know they've cut to the bone a lot of their core offerings including uh safety and training programs you know when their revenue dropped they they started cutting and they cut everything except for their legal expenses basically and so um yeah, I don't. I don't see any. There's no new initiatives that they talk about with getting members. Um, I don't know that their tactics have changed at all. They're still employing, you know, MMP, which is the David McKenzie company that uh, was was part of the this case. It didn't make it. Accusations about them didn't make it to the verdict. But Wayne Lapierre said that the. David McKenzie's uh, television production company that had worked with the NRA for, for years and kept charging them for a show they no longer made had committed a fraud against the NRA. And they're, they're still working with that. I mean, there's still nothing has changed since this verdict came down. Now, look, there's still a second half of this trial. So I guess they're pinning a lot of their hopes on, on that. And, and maybe they'll be successful at convincing the judge that they no further, uh, reforms are necessary, but, um, yeah, as far as just bottom line, I don't see any specific outreach programs that they've spun up over the last couple of years. If anything, they're spinning things down. Um, but you know, I, if anyone has seen new, new tactics beyond, you know, the telemarketing and direct mail stuff they usually use or friends of NRA dinners or, events like Great American Outdoor Show, all stuff they've been doing for a long time. Um, you know, I, I would love to hear if anyone has gotten some new pitch or some new program they've seen from the NRA trying to recruit people. But I, I'm not aware of any.